continue to volunteer. So scouting has three separate levels. So you have the individual scout, which are the, the girls anywhere from ages four to 18. So you'll hear us talk a little bit about that um, coming up, but um, girls from four to 18 are eligible to be or to participate in a troop. So troops are groups of girls, um, usually starting in elementary school is when we see the highest um, degree of participation. And then those troops are then in councils. And councils are multiple counties, and in our case, they also cover multiple leagues. So I, um, I'll speak from our experience in Northeast Ohio. Um, we have 18 counties within our council. So we have, we run from the border of Pennsylvania and Ohio all the way over to Toledo, if those of you are familiar with this state. Um, down to Canton, and then all the way up to Lake Erie. So we are a very, very large council. We have 36 girls, or 36,000 um, girls um, in that council. So while you're thinking about this, is to think about the other leagues that are around you um, and that are in your council territory, because those um, will be your allies in going forward if you choose to um, take this project on as a league. So I'll give you a little background about Voter Girl. Um, we were very blessed um, to have the CFO of Girl Scouts Northeast Ohio, and he is one of our greatest members, and he came to us and said, I think that it would be a great opportunity um, for us to, um, that we have a badge that is a citizenship badge. And I think that this would be a great opportunity for us to um, partner as League of Women Voters and Girl Scouts to come up with a program. And when we first started, we thought, oh gosh, this, you know, this might attract maybe a hundred girls. Um, but we thought we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. So um, Amy, as I um, had said before, was a Girl Scout um, and, and currently involved in um, Girl Scouts Northeast Ohio. Um, and I got together and we formed a core committee. Now we would recommend that if you have a core committee that you look at um, teachers, and maybe um, corporate trainers, um, people that can really be um, effective in the classroom um, with these um, youngsters. So our core team was responsible for the research and the curriculum development. So the way that we did this is we got all of the badge requirements from Girl Scouts and we then turn that and into a program. So we looked at all of the requirements and looked at what curriculum could we build around um, each badge. And for those of you that, may, again, may not be as familiar with Girl Scouts, the girls are especially um, the younger girls. So especially when we're talking about our daisies and our brownies and the juniors, they really work towards badges. And if you've seen them um, selling Girl Scout cookies, you will see that their, their whole sash is full of badges. So we wanted to work towards um, having them be able to earn the citizenship badge within a day. So one of the, the, the curriculum and the research wasn't nearly as challenging as trying to find an, a place um, to hold the event. So that was, um, we were very fortunate and we are fortunate to have a great partnership with Kent State University. And Kent has a regional campus um, that is not as busy on the weekends. And we were able then to utilize their facility um, for the day. So we'll go into that a little bit more um, coming up, but 
that would be when people are thinking about the planning process, that is one area to really um, focus first is where could we hold this? So what we needed is we needed two classrooms um, for each level of scouting um, to be able to hold all of the girls um, that we wanted um, to come. So that, that kind of limited then where we could um, hold the events. So we'll talk a little bit about the curriculum. The curriculum is, as you can see there, is customized for each level of Girl Scouts. So daisies are your four and five year olds. Brownies are like six and seven and eight, somewhere around your first and second graders. Um, your juniors are in, in the um, fourth and fifth grade and sometimes into sixth. And then your cadets are usually your junior high girls. So those are the levels of scouting that we address on the day. Um, on one Saturday per year, um, we offer this um, program. The seniors and ambassadors, um, these girls are amazing, um, but they are also amazingly involved in school. So to get them to be able to share an entire Saturday has been rather challenging. So we've been working this year on looking at online options for them and doing their projects um, virtually, um, especially in light of COVID. Um, and also then looking at maybe some in-person options at Kent State um, with some of the women on campus that are involved, um, that are very involved in like the voter registration process on campus. So we also wanted to look and see what are our learning outcomes and what do we hope that they will, you know, what, what do we want them to walk away knowing? And one of the areas that we wanted for every level, even if they couldn't write, was voting. They wanted, we wanted them to be able to experience what it was like to vote. And it only makes sense when you're looking at being a good citizen and when you're looking at what that entails, most often we say being a good citizen includes casting your ballot. So our voting booth experience, we worked with our board of elections and we'll show you pictures here in a little while where even our four and five year olds were able to vote on uh, by picture. So it might say, what's your favorite pet? And we had dog, cat, bunny. Um, and then they were able to fill in the dot. So, and our Board of Elections has been amazing. I cannot say enough good about our Portage County, Ohio, put a little shout out to them, um, that they have been so wonderful that they actually take a true ballot so what it would look like if you would go into um, and still have a paper ballot, what that would look like is exactly what the girls get, but just with questions um, that are developed for their level. So that is our, that was one of our, um, one of, wanted to be one of our biggest takeaways other than just the badge curriculum. So volunteers, so the volunteers that you will um, need would be about five to 10 people on your core team. So that was again, the, the team that um, in our case came up with the curriculum and um, incorporates a lot of our instructors, um, but it also is our the administrative end of it. So it, it um, covers, knowing registration and being able to, um, you know, food for our volunteers, um, which is very important um, when they're spending all day with us. So on event day, um, we required an additional 20 to 30 people, um, just depending on the number of girls that we had in attendance. So you will see listed there that we have, um, we needed volunteers for food. So we found that not everyone was comfortable in being there all day long. They, and they weren't comfortable then in, um, and you know, that maybe they didn't, couldn't spend the day, but they wanted to volunteer. 
So that's where we ask for food for our volunteers. So people that wanted to be involved could actually bring food um, and didn't need to stay them the entire day. We also have registration. Um, we were very fortunate uh, to our, our very first year, uh, we handled registration um, by ourselves. And we can tell you probably, and um, Amy could you know, would chime in and say the same thing, that um, probably the thing you will want to do the most is to partner with your council and have them help you with registration. So we handled it through Sign Up Genius the first year. And they, when Girl Scouts Northeast Ohio realized how good this program was, they then volunteered to do the registration through their automated program. And it was a godsend, um, especially when we had over 200 girls every year that we have, you know, that we've done this. So we also have set up and clean up. So again, if people are comfortable in being in the classroom, um, that's fine. Um, they can come help set up and clean up. Um, and then we have classroom assistants. So maybe uh, someone isn't comfortable in being an instructor, um, but they're comfortable in coming in and helping be a classroom assistant. And that might mean helping um, the little ones cut, or it might mean answering some questions for some of our juniors and our cadets. So the finished product, um, our finished product, our very first voter girl was held on um, October 21st, 2017. And as you can see, it was held at the Twinsburg Regional Campus. And again, I cannot say enough good um, about the partnership that we have um, with our regional campus. And we had 220 Girl Scouts um, registered. So it was a resounding success from the first moment that we offered the program. We held two different sections. Um, we had one from 9 o'clock to 11.30, and then we had the other one from 1 to 3.30. Because our council is so big, we wanted to make sure um, that some of the um, that some of our troops that were coming from a far distance were able to maybe leave in the morning and still make the one o'clock in the afternoon and being able to travel back to um, their home area. The, we had um, two sessions um, for the first year, you will note, we did not address daisies, which are the four and five-year-olds. So the very first year we did brownies, juniors, and cadets, and then we had one session for seniors and ambassadors. Your seniors are ninth and 10th graders and ambassadors are juniors and seniors in high school. And again, when they get to that age, they have so much going on and they're usually, um, if they've made it that far in Girl Scouts, they're usually your leaders in the school and they usually have a lot going on on the weekends. Um, and then we had, because of just the location and because of the standards that, you know, they ask us um, to maintain, we had 25 participants per classroom. Um, so that's where we were limited in our number, um, but our number has been fine um, so far. So these are, um, this was um, in the, Middle here where my cursor is, um, Jane Christiesen is the CEO of Girl Scouts Northeast Ohio, and Jane has been one of our biggest champions. Um, she actually came the first year um, and went around and talked to all of the girls in the classroom and, um, you know, not only spoke about Girl Scouts, but spoke about how important being a good citizen and, and even how important it was to vote. Um, you can see here are just some of the signs um, that we made for each of um, the classroom doors. And, um, and then these are some of our volunteers. Here, if you can't see her um, on your screen because we have so many people, this is Amy, um, my partner in crime. So I wanted to um, do another shout out. Um, it's been a, a great partnership. So here is um, one of our favorite parts is these are our little brownies. Um, and 
I will go ahead and play just a little bit of the video for you. Um, they learned um, how to parade. Um, so, and this is their uh, parade at the end. This is when they are leaving. And if you can't hear what they're saying, they're saying, we are voter girls, we are Girl Scouts. So um, this is, and they've made their batons um, as they're leaving um, the venue. Um, idea of um, some of the activities. Um, so they learned what um, a parade um, and then um, what it means to um, to then march um, for what you believe in. Um, so that was part of their learning experience as well. Um, here we have different views from our classroom and the gentleman here is an elected official in Portage County um, who came to talk to our juniors, so that's our um, fifth and sixth graders, and then he also talked to our cadets um, and then our older girls as well. And in, in the, with the older, with our ambassadors, um, their badge is called Behind the Ballot and it talks about campaign financing. <laughs> so um, he really talks about what it takes to become an elected official and talks about not only from um, the point of view of what you need externally, but what happens behind the scenes as well and what happens behind the ballot. So here you'll see how our Board of Elections, they actually brought the, um, the true voter the voting booths um with with them and you can see over here um they each get a a pen and their ballot and they cast their vote and then they place it in a true ballot box here and when they leave um, our volunteers have already counted their votes and the results are on tabulated and on sheets when they leave so they get to talk about the results on the way home and talk about what it would mean if they lost, like if their, um, if their issue lost, what does that mean and um, how they could campaign differently um, or how they might campaign if um, that was a true issue. So um, two years ago, some of you um, joined us and we, um, these are all of the leagues around the country um, that have come on board to the Voter Girl Project. Our number one up there is Columbus, uh, Metro Columbus, which is here in Ohio. Um, we had a participant or a, a volunteer uh, the very first year, and she loved it so much that they went back and did it the very next year. So they were our very first, um, and um, are kind of our partners um, in this, and they've been amazing. And I know that Naperville, I know, I believe you're on the um, on the call tonight. So thank you all so much um, for joining this program. Um, as you will um, see, Voter Girl is actually trademarked um, because we really wanted to keep this curriculum within the Girl Scout, um, you know, within the realm of Girl Scouts. It was. I mean, that was the original partnership, and we really wanted to keep Voter Girl within um, the Girl Scout family. So we did um, trademark uh, Voter Girl, and we've been asked if we would be interested in doing it for others and other organizations, um, possibly, uh, but not with Voter Girl, uh, because we really wanted to make um, and really wanted to keep that brand um, really associated with, with the Girl Scout organization. So this was um, from Naperville um, in Chicago. They, this is actually a newscast and this was their very first Voter Girl and it received um, press and their six o'clock news. Um, so that was super exciting for us. 
um, to know that we were um, then starting to blanket the United States. Here are some other, we have um, Metro Columbus again. Um, we have um, back here is a state senator um, with Stephanie Kunzi. Uh, we have a couple of um, judges, local judges here as well. So they really have embraced this program and have been amazing partners. We have Jersey Shore, there's another Naperville, Morristown. So everyone has been able to kind of add their own touch and flair um, while sticking with the original curriculum that we have that would then ensure each fall receive a badge at the end of the day. So we'll go back a little bit to the badges. Um, for those of you that were Girl Scouts um, and Girl Scout leaders, you will know how important the badges are, number one, and how exciting it is for girls to earn a badge in a day. Very often, troops meet once a week, um, and so it's hard for them to incorporate an entire badge in um, just one meeting. So we wanted to make sure that we were addressing um, that need and that excitement for the girls um, to receive their badge in one day. And here is, um, here's another one, and they are getting ready to go into their voting project um, as well. So they had, um, here they actually have um, printers set up and um, showed how they print ballots and um, for the girls to cast their vote. So this is, or we hope, <laughs> is Voter Girl 2020. We are, um, we are not necessarily as hopeful um, that this will um, take place this year, but in theory, without COVID, this would have been um, our project. So, the, so we decided that to, in all our council and most councils across the United States, most troops do not form until October 1st. So we found that October 17th and doing it in the middle of October um, it really didn't give the troops, especially our younger girls that are just forming troops, it didn't really give them a lot of time to um, actually meet and decide that they would become part and, and participate in Voter Girl. So we thought if we moved it back a little bit, and we also had to take into consideration our volunteers because many of our volunteers would be helping with elections. So we needed to then make it a little bit later um, to then allow our volunteers to still work on campaigns, but still be able to participate in voter girl as well. So we found that this was a, um, a, a nice happy medium is to do it in the middle of November. Um, we also, as many of you, have to take into consideration weather. Um, so we knew, we knew we couldn't go too late into the fall season as we may be running into some inclement weather. So those were some of our decisions. Um, but your Girl Scout Council will be able to answer a lot of those questions about, um, about when is a good time for you to have it because they've seen success in their programs and when might be a better time in the year for, for you. Registration, again, is handled by our Girl Scouts of Northeast Ohio. We cannot stress this enough. Um, it is probably one of the best things that happened to the program. Um, not only was it, did it take a lot off of our plates, um, but it was handled electronically and a lot easier um, for us. So we highly recommend getting with your council and having them um, partner with you. The first year we did not charge a fee. Um, we, it, was, it was free and then we contributed um, the, to the badges. However, we found that there wasn't as much buy-in from the girls and their troops and their leaders. And so we actually then decided that the first year we charged $10, 
So that really just covered the cost of um, having Girl Scouts handle our registration, which is about $2 per girl. We have a voter girl patch. And for those of you that are currently involved in Girl Scouts, you'll know that patches are almost as important as badges nowadays. Um, a patch actually is an experience. So a badge is something that you earn. A patch is something that you might get as an experience. So if you went to a camp or if you went to um, on an expedition um, that you would receive a patch. So this includes the voter girl patch and then it also includes their badge and then any of the supplies that the girls need. So it's not necessarily a fundraiser, but it also um, doesn't deplete the funds for your lead. Um, so that's where um, the $12 um, non-refundable fee um, for each girl we found to be very reasonable. And the Girl Scout troops were very um, willing to pay that, especially the, the leaders when they knew that they didn't have much for their girls to get a badge, that they didn't have to um, work and find all of the programs and, um, and all of the activities. We also have scholarships available for girls that would be unable to attend otherwise. So not only do, do, do our local leagues um, contribute money um, to, to scholarships, but also our, um, but also the uh, Girl Scout Northeast Ohio has um, the um, scholarships for them. So again, um, it is registered and copyrighted um, for the reason that we want to protect the brand um, and want to use it for um, Girl Scout. And here you will see that we added daisies. Um, so in 2019, um, we added daisies into the program. Um, and so we do have curriculum then for the four and five-year-olds as well. So the manual, um, we have collaborated and put all of this information together. So it talks about project operations. And when we talk about projects, and things that we could not have even thought of. The fir I mean, the, the first year was certainly a learning experience for all of us, such as um, Alice training, is to make sure that at least one instructor um, in each room is Alice trained. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with that, it is active shooter training. Um, and unfortunately, it's something we never thought we'd have to address. Uh, but certainly if we are in a school situation or when we're with um, youth, uh, there needs to be at least one person in every classroom that's Alice trained. Um, so these are all things that we learned um, through um, trial and error and our, and our process. Um, and with our operations as well, um, looking at first aid and fire, you know, making sure that we were with fire code, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot that goes into just the project operation that um, is in the manual. Curriculum, um, all of the activities and all of the supplies um, that each classroom will need is listed um, very, um, it's a plug and play. It really is. It's, it's once you get it, it's easy <laughs> uh, because everything has already been through um, the um, been through many uh, different um, processes now and we we are still learning um, we learn all the time so um, every time that we learn something new and learn something from someone else we and um, one of the other troops that's done it we are including that in the curriculum the press releases, uh, we wanted to make sure that everyone you know, knew about it. Um, safety procedures, again, that's where we're talking about Alice training and uh, making sure that we have the fire escapes um, and we go through that with the girls in the beginning of the day so that they know where to go. We have all of the certificates uh, that they get, get at the end, um, the evaluations, the logos, any helpful hints that we found um, over time, and we we receive those all the time from people um, that have already done the program. Um, so we've included those, and it just keeps 
um, it just keeps getting better um, every year that we that we've um, done the program. So the we talk about and probably our um, when I go around to each of the classrooms. Um, one of my favorite parts is asking all of the girls, what, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? And I, I'm telling you, these, these girls have some awesome ideas of what their superpower want, that they want to be. And we go from teleportation um, to invisibility to uh, making their siblings disappear. I mean, you name it, we've heard it. Um, and but when I say, but all of you already have a superpower, um, it's very interesting. Um, almost to a classroom, at least someone says vote, that your vote is your superpower. And that is when I have my shield on my arm that Wonder Woman has, but ours is our vote. Um, and so when we, that is the one thing, again, that we wanted the girls to walk away is knowing that their vote is so important and that, that it does, and we talk about, especially with the older girls, we talk about how important um, one vote could be. And we talk about Harry Burns. And we talk about with his vote that 17 million women, you know, get, got the right to vote um, with the 19th Amendment. Um, and so how important just one vote is. So that is, um, that is Voter Girl. Um, this is our contact information and Amy is going to um, put this in, um, in the chat box. But in, um, in just closing before we open it to questions, cause I'm sure we will have a lot of them. Um, it has been an amazing experience and something that we hope will spread across the country. Um, we have worked with the um, League of Women Voters US. They're very familiar um, with Voter Girl. Um, and for those of you that might have been um, at convention two years ago, that is when Voter Girl came to life. Um, so that was very exciting um, to actually have uh, it personified um, and it's been very good for especially our young girls as well um, to be looking up to a superhero um, that actually has to do with um, citizenship and um, and then being a good citizen and being involved and voting so um, we will entertain any questions um, I'm actually going to Stop sharing my screen so I can see some of you. Um, and sure. oh yeah, sure. thank you. That Amy has right there. I Amy, I'm going to have you talk so you go into the view. Hi everyone. So this is the patch. It's um, you're obviously seeing it backwards, right? But I mean, that's what it looks like. To, no, you look seeing it okay. All right. So this is the patch. Um, it's it's something that we developed and we have uh, made locally. It's uh, it's not a it's a uh, an embroidered patch. So and it has a, a backing that allows the girls to iron it on to their sashes. Um, we've actually seen it a couple different places on girls' sashes, and this is what they really they go they go after this quite a bit as far as the. The, what they like the transaction that happens you know the patch and the badge are things that they come to earn so um, we have this at a local company you, when you get the the manual you also get the information about ordering it from that company which at that point means you're just paying for the actual item and but you're obviously you know welcome to to develop your own there um, there's just an amazing array of things that they do patches for now, as far as the badges, somebody was asking about the badges. Uh, you know, I don't have them in my hand, but these are what the badges look like. And these are actually about the size. Um, you know, uh, the daisy one isn't on here. It's actually a, just a big daisy. But these are the, this one, this one, this one, this triangle. So those are the badges that you, per we purchase them. 
Um, that's something that we purchase when with the twelve dollar fee. Uh, and I, I did explain it earlier that for the twelve dollars, two dollars goes back to GSNEO for the work that they do on um, the registration. And then about five dollars of what we have, five to seven dollars, pays for the patch. The patches are about two thirty a piece, and then the badges themselves are probably another two thirty. It just depends on the badge, two dollars and thirty cents. So, uh, and then we have some supply issues too. Um, first year is an investment type year, um, but so we make a little bit of money that we plow back into some things um, this year probably. We might be doing some things for, for COVID. Um, who knows? You know, we have a little bit of money set aside. Uh, so that, that's helpful. Um, and uh, the one thing we found out last year that we didn't realize was uh, when girls come to these experiential things or these, these badge boss events that are held, they don't often go home with the badge. So we had moms and leaders basically saying, thank you so much for providing the badge you know, as well as the patch, because we have to go and buy those ourselves out of the rest of our troop money. So I know some people were concerned on the chat that um, about the cost, but you're providing the patch, you're providing the badge, and Girl Scouts do fundraising. They're little fundraisers uh, between cookies and, and other things. Um, so they will take their money um, that they raise and they pay for it. And I, I know, but I know there are scholarship funds somewhere along the line too. Thanks, Sherry. Um, yeah, thank you. And um, we, for uh, at least for Girl Scouts Northeast Ohio, there are programs, um, they have their annual program. So they have many um, different offerings. So all different kinds of camps and other badges that they can earn. And our protocol is the cheapest and least expensive badge in their um, in their annual offering. Um, so the um, so we and when we were asking and we did some um, we did some market research <laughs> before we actually um, put a cost to this and we asked the um, we asked the leaders is is this a, you know, would you pay for this? And they said, absolutely, because they would have to pay for the badge anyway. Plus they'd have to buy all of the supplies for all of the girls. Plus they'd have to come up with the curriculum. Plus they'd have to, so it is well worth it to them for that, um, you know, that minor cost. Um, I've also seen a couple of questions here. Um, yes. The badges are the same across the United States. Those are, uh, the curriculum is actually from LWV US, or I mean, um, Girl Scouts US. So those, um, that badge is across the, the board. The other question, um, and we've been asked this many times and I kind of addressed it a little bit, um, is to say that have we thought about or what, um, was there a thought about doing this with, with Boy Scouts? Um, the answer is not for Voter Girl. Um, Voter Girl is um, strictly for um, Girl Scouts. Um, so that, and that is one reason, you know, again, then we, uh, that we trademarked it. Now, is it possible um, in the future to maybe address that? Um, possibly, it might not. <laughs> Amy, it might not be us. <laughs> oh, right. We certainly have our hands full um, with the with the Voter Girl Project. Um, but, um, but again, it was a beautiful partnership that we had with Girl Scouts, and um, and so for now, um, that's what we're promoting. Um, we have been asked about maybe taking some of the curriculum into classrooms um, because as many schools are discontinuing or um, not addressing civics um, to the level that it, they have in the past. Um, so it is possible that we might come up with something for classrooms, um, in, in, but, um, but not currently. Someone asked if you'll make virtual appearances. So 
absolutely. Um, I think, I don't know if Colorado's on here, but um, I was fortunate enough to do a presentation um, to the Colorado League the State Convention um, there. So absolutely. And by the way, um, I noticed that um, we had, who was all on here, Amy, that I said, oh, Sonoma Valley? I am sure that you need an in-person visit from Border Girl. Sure about that. And, um, and maybe Boulder County um, as well, because I have a friend up here. <laughs> so, um, but no, and um, definitely um, always open to um, addressing leagues um, or even state conventions as well um, to share the story because we love this program so much. Um, Good question. We did not, um, this program did not um, really address the suffrage movement um, specifically. So you can take a look at the um, curriculum online. And um, for those of you, I think um, Maureen um, sent the link to the badges um, for um, further up in the chat. And so you can take a look. Suffrage actually isn't um, part of any of the, um, the curriculum of the badges. Um, starting with the daisies, um, they learn about like the state flag and the state bird and the state um, logo and or the motto and that. And so, and then all the way up to everything really has to do with voting and not necessarily how, um, how we got the vote. Now, that being said, um, we did address, um, we did have a suffrage uh, a spotlight on it last year because we knew that um, Motor Girl would be after Women's Equality Day this year. So we wanted to address it last year. Um, and we did talk. Um, just briefly about suffrage, um, but Tony, that's a really good point um, and certainly something that we can look into. But again, we were taking our curriculum directly from um, the badge requirement. Jane, are there any? Um, yes, there uh, was one question. If we do uh, purchase this program in the manual, Will we get updates every year or how can we interact with other leagues who have done it? Um, that's a great question. And Amy and I just talked about that. Um, we are actually looking at setting up a, um, a Facebook page um, just for um, voter girl uh, participants and voter girl leagues so that we can kind of have a share of ideas. But we also send updates um, to the program because it comes electronically. So we can then also send um, the changes electronically as well. Good question. Uh, there was another question. Is the uh, current program a fundraiser for your league? Well, that's where no, we have, with, now with the voter girl, um, we put a lot into it at first, as you could see, um, especially with the curriculum and the logos and the, um, so yes, but the majority of the, um, the money we get goes right back into our voter girl um, and sending our updates. Um, and so yes and no, um, we've been very fortunate, um, but we don't look at it as a fundraiser. Rather, we look at it as spreading the word um, and getting um, other leagues to hop on board. What is included in the program with this purchase? It is an entire, everything that you will need to do the program. So anywhere from the, the placards that you saw as the, um, for each room, where it says what the room number is and with all of the logos, it's everywhere from the curriculum to the supplies that you'll need to where you can order the patches to um, all of the safety and security measures that you'll need to put into place. Um, it is truly a plug and play. Anything that you need is in that program. Um, so I, I, that, I hope that answers um, your question. 
Um, there was another one that does your pricing, um, would you consider special circumstances? For example, um, uh, some in a situation where there's one council for two states, would you know the two state leagues have to buy it? And just would you consider talking to people about special circumstances? Sure. Sure. And that's where, too, when you're looking at, um, so the cost of the program is um, $150. Um, and, but with that, I would encourage you to look at your other leads around you because most councils, for instance, our council includes, Amy, what we have eight, I think we have eight leads within our council. Um, so we could then be able to take that amount and divide it among the eight leagues that we have. Um, because most councils will do one program. Um, so because it's, it's such an undertaking um, for them that um, currently Girl Scouts Northeast Ohio just has one program per year. Um, and that is, now, if we start to see numbers increasing, we can certainly um, change that. Um, but yes, absolutely, please reach out to us um, and talk to us. Uh, there was a question with respect to seniors and, and ambassadors, how do you do a badge all in one day? And I will answer that since I taught the seniors and ambassadors. In that case, they had homework they had to do before the day. They came prepared to discuss certain items. And then they also had follow-up homework um, because that badge is much more rigorous than a, say a daisy patch. <laughs> so we did it through homework. The, uh, and additionally, um, thank you, Jane. Additionally, um, we have found that the older girls aren't as, they aren't as, the badges aren't as important to them. It's the experience. So we have this year, um, we're kind of pivoting towards more of an experience for them than for them to earn the badge. Um, if they want to do the badge project, they can, but we're trying to make it um, an experience for them. So they're able to talk to college students, you know, college girls, uh, which is very exciting to them, um, talking about registering voters on campus and ways that they can get involved. Um, so, you know, when they get, you know, when they get to school and, um, and then how they can be part of, if, if many of you have heard the um, hashtag elect her, um, is really a promotion on universities now um, to really talk about girls running for office. And that's not only in school, but also when they get out of school and running for local office. So we're trying to partner those two um, as well. And um, Cheryl Lynn, in answer to your question, the question is, is there a membership component um, for leagues? Absolutely. Um, we are not only looking at our our ambassadors to our juniors and seniors um, to become members, uh, but we also have membership material um, for all of the leaders um, and the parents that are there as well. Um, this was a tip that we learned. Um, it just, we were slow learners on this one, but uh, the first couple of years we allowed um, as many leaders in the room as, as wanted to be there. Um, we learned that that was um, very detrimental to some of the girls in the room um, because, bless their hearts, the, the leaders would sit in the back of the room and just chatter. And so we decided this year um, and last year we limit that we're limiting to two leaders in the room at a time. And if they want to swap back and forth, um, but it also then we have a lounge area for all of our leaders and the and, um, volunteers that are in between registrations and that so that they can go and sit and um, there's wi-fi available um, there are vending machines available um, so they are able to um, and at that point um, amy 
goes in and talks to them about membership in league and what League of Women Voters is all about and um, who is putting on the program. Jane and Amy, anything I'm missing? Um, well, one question I think Amy answered online, but they asked about insurance. Do we have to get special insurance for this? The, um, we have not in the Girl Scouts. Um, when Girl Scout, when they sign and the leader, okay, brings the girl, the leader is actually the one that is in charge, okay? And so she's, so she actually is the one to take responsibility of the girls while they're there. And then they have special insurance, not, I mean, not only for Penn State, but then the Girl Scouts um, put the insurance in their leaders. So a leader has to stay with their girls. Um, that was one of the, um, and, and that's across the board. Like if they take them to any um, place, they need to stay with the girls and it's no different for a voter girl. This also applies to medical information too. We, we asked that the girls come with their own medical information uh, that belongs to their guardian or to their um, their leader and that person, the guardian or the leader is the person that's in charge of the medical aspect. Say, you know, God forbid you have somebody with a peanut allergy or, you know, some, some issue, somebody falls. The leader has medical responsibility or has the responsibility to see that child's medical, um, medical needs at that point. Um, so that's, that's, I think that's helped us a lot because we know then that, uh, um, you know, they're coming with all their medical information too. So we don't have to carry that, keep that information. And did you talk about um, photographs? Oh, hey, thank um, you. Yeah, no, I didn't. Um, so the, the, again, these are, these are things that we've learned that we're passing on to everyone um, is that the first year we did not have photo releases for the girls. So you'll notice that some of those were all the back of their head <laughs> because we, the very first year, we had all of these wonderful photographs um, from my father um, who was there taking all of these great pictures and we couldn't use any of them. Um, so again, things that we learned that we're passing along um, to everyone else. And when they, um, when they sign up for the uh, event, they also check a box that says, you know, my, yes, my daughter is, um, you know, or yes, this child can be photographed. Um, and so on their name tag to make them not feel, uh, you know, for the ones that don't, that we're not able to take their photograph, um, we just outline very slightly outline the edge of their um, name tag in a, in a different color. Um, so that we know, but they don't, and that they don't feel um, awkward um, that their name tag is different from all the other girls. One last question. Would you show your shields again? Oh, yes, wait. Um, let's put them back on. The, um... Actually, you need to get up and twirl around. Oh my gosh, no, now, now, now you're going to, now you're going to. I will but get they, up and- You need to see the say, skirt. You need to they see. have a cape as well as my skirt <laughs> and my shield. <laughs> um, so voter girl has made different appearances. So yes, um, especially if you're within driving distance um, and, um, and all of those others as well. Um, certainly always willing to do a virtual performance. I saw um, back here as well, there are some, yes, the photo release um, form um, yes, Amy is with the manual, and um, the and somebody said they're they're waiting to get their program started. So are we? Um, we are sure, unfortunately, that ours probably won't happen this year. Um, but we are um, we're still working with our seniors and our ambassadors because theirs is going to be remotely you know, um, held remotely anyway. Um, so we really think that we can still perhaps get theirs completed, um, but the ones for um, in person, we might have to wait till next year as well. 
Any, um, any other questions? Any, um, see, I will, um, I'm actually going to allow anyone to um, unmute themselves at this time. If you have something or a question. Is the uh, form, um, uh, is the manual sent in electronic form so we can download the forms and send banners to copy shops and things? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful program really enjoyed it oh well thank you all so very much we know that there are um that the, you have other um caucuses starting in two minutes um so thank you all so very much um for sharing your time with us um and for being a part of this program um please reach out to us with any questions um enjoy the rest of convention um and remember we all have a superpower and we need to use it on november 3rd he heard on the third. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Bye, everyone. <laughs>